Good morning. It's a beautiful 45 degrees here in Virginia this morning. And today's project is going to be a couple of them. Like we were saying the other, like I was saying the other day, trying to get that DA or that uh, F550 completed. Got the injectors in the other night, so that should be done maybe today. Uh, just depends on if I get the gaskets from Ford this morning or not. Uh, they haven't called me saying they're available. So the Bobcat has a little bit of a wiring issue in the wiring harness, intermittent uh, switch power going to the starter. So, uh, and the glow plug is the same issue. So somewhere in that wiring harness. So we might tear, tear that into that this afternoon. So the big project for today is one I'm kind of excited about. So some of you guys remember me showing you the, the Dodge 5500. 12 foot bed, four wheel drive, manual transmission. Do a quick walk through and show you what we're gonna do today. So, she's completely bone stock. The only modifications that she's gotten is I put I threw this in right after I got it. It's just a little insert they make for these. And it's actually got the shift notch so that you can shift into gear without hitting your cup holders. They're about 35 bucks on eBay or Amazon. So, if you've got one of these, all of your cup holders down on the bottom. It's really, really difficult to drive and drink, have a drink and just cruise in this without that. So anyways, it's got the stock stereo system in it with uh, Bluetooth. And as you can see, somebody's gotten a little bit crazy with screwing stuff to the dash. So anyways, I've got, I've got this style here and this one here just sticks on there. But uh, went online and found a company that replaces this stereo with a flat screen, shifts these down here, takes these switches and these switches and puts them up here. So should be getting that in the, in shortly. But yeah, she's got the 6.7 Cummins with the six-speed um, G56 and manual transfer case. Uh, stay tuned for you know future videos. We're gonna have a the clutch replacement going from the stock clutch to uh, <clears throat> a South Bend uh, dual plate. Uh, that's on the way, and then we'll end up swapping out this front bumper for a heavy duty winch bumper, and then possibly looking into doing the uh, single wheel conversion. So they make because this is a it's a ten lug. 19 and a half inch rim and as you can see the itty bitty little pizza cutters that's got on there they're not too bad i get about 15 to 16 miles of the gallon right now but it's just off-road traction with this truck weighs 9200 pounds and without a load on it so she's a she's a big old beast and uh kind of like to get something that's a little bit more off-road friendly so they make a couple different options on it but uh first things i did i swapped out the uh um the air filter for the k&n on these dodges they come with a pretty pretty beefy intake system it's just this little this little itty bitty tube right here it's you know a couple two three inches there you know uh so it's not really choking anything so putting a cold air intake on these really doesn't help that much the air box is pretty huge the big intake goes right into the fender so it's not any kind of a major restriction you're looking at like a six inch hose that goes into the fender on this and then the filter is the i switched it out to the knn the old one was pretty pretty bad but other than that it's completely stock still got the egr cooler still got all your cool extra coolant line crossover bs and your uh, PCV filters in here. Still got your throttle valve, all of your other bullshit that goes in here. Um, this the stock tube, stock um, intercooler, and then uh, so on the on the 5500, it comes with a stock. I don't know if you can see it down there, but it's a stock four inch exhaust. Ugh. So she's a pretty pretty beefy exhaust on it already stock but uh you know me we're gonna we're gonna swap everything out 
The other big factor that, that of why I really like this truck is it's already been rhino lined on, on the undercarriage. The entire undercarriage has already been rhino lined. Everything's been undercoated. It's really, really clean. So, she had a 2011 with 106,000 miles on it. It's got all the auxiliary packages. It's got all the extra bells and whistles, with exception of the stereo. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to do the big no-no. I kind of unbox this a little bit. We're going to do the H&K or Bully Dog um, programmer system. Put this into the... Um, Put this in the dash there. I'm gonna use one of my one of my mounts to mount that, and then the complete EGR death and cat deletion kits all come in this box. So when you get the box, um, it's pretty. I mean, it comes. It, it's it's got to be signed for because just the programmer is two grand as a grand, and then this entire other kit is two grand. But it comes with your delete kit for your for your uh, um, your throttle valve delete. It's got a bunch of mounts for everything else. You got your nice cover, and everything is really nicely made. Um, and I haven't opened this up, so that's gonna be the project for today. Uh, I'll keep you, keep you guys pay, uh, updated with everything because all this is gonna come off. This tube's gonna come off, the sensor will get dropped out. This valve comes out, this valve comes out. There, that black plate goes on here, that red tube piece goes on here. These all get dropped. And we're gonna tie this wiring harness up down here by the, inje by the injection pump. And uh, this little plastic cover comes off, EGR cooler comes off, and those block off valves, those whole, or block off covers, Go where this bolts onto, uh, and then this hose gets rerouted over to. Uh, I believe it's down in the back, right over there, underneath there. So there's an exhaust port that gets covered, and then there's a coolant line on the back side of that. It might it's either over there or it's this one right here. Uh, it's been a few years since I did one of these deletion kits. So, anyways, yeah. So there's part A. Once I get the stereo in, we'll have another part, and then we're gonna do the the bumper at the same time as we do the uh, <clears throat> the intercooler and the radiator. I'm gonna swap swap out to the Mishimoto um, coolers on this, just because with the 5500, its towing rating is like 38,000 pounds or something like that. So I want to be able to run that. Oh, and it's gonna get a uh, the 185 degree thermostat right now it's got a 200 degree thermostat or 195 degree thermostat in it it doesn't keep the temperature very high but i don't like seeing my temp gauge creep up over 205 so on the gauges on these dodges 200 is dead center and uh when you're going up a hill or you're towing any kind of a trailer or the say the bobcat up a hill with your foot in the throttle the temp gauge creeps up to about 212, and uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I really like the uh, the 6.7. It's such a huge in increase in horsepower and torque over the 5.9. Um, I've had the uh, 2007 model 6.7 with the 6-speed and the manual transfer case, but uh, I really wanted this newer interior that Dodge came out with in 2011. So, she's a 2011. Uh oh, I was wrong. Gross vehicle weights 8,800, not 9,200. But uh, really love these Dodge back seats too with the compartments underneath there. But because of the depth tank being underneath the floor, 2011 they didn't have the access panels here. 2013 they came out with the little cubbies that go right here. I really, really like those. But for the price of what I paid for this truck with the mileage. Um, you know, I, I could, I just, I just can't complain. The, uh, it's already got the CM bed on it with the, uh, gooseneck in the bed. 
great tires on it. Um, so I'll let you guys know. I paid, I paid more than I probably should have, but less than I think I would have, if that makes sense. I paid forty-three thousand for it, with a hundred and five thousand miles on it. Completely bone stock. They were asking, they were asking fifty-four for it. Um, I was able to get it down because of a few minor issues on these Dodges. What's common is about every 70,000 miles, roughly, your water pump, uh, let's see if you can focus in on it. So your water pump right there goes bad. The, uh, there's an upgrade kit. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the, there's two different versions. There's the seven blade plastic and then there's the five blade steel uh, in the upgrade kits. Uh, I've ran both. I don't see a substantial difference in them. The uh, Even the stock one's not bad. Like I said, about, it pushes plenty of water. It's not hard to get to. It's literally one bolt right... Let's see if I can focus in on it. One bolt right there where my finger's pointing. And then another one straight down right here. Uh, right behind this belt. So you take out those two bolts, drain your coolant, or you put a bucket underneath it because some coolant's going to come out. Um, you take your belt off, which is just the release the tension tensioner down there, so that you can get it off of your alternator pulley. Just set the belt down, take your two bolts out, grab that, wiggle it a little bit. Now, uh, with this shroud on here and the enclosed fan blade like this it's got the the wrap right here on the back side it's a little bit difficult to get this out clean what i used to do on the uh on the ones that had the other style fan was you could stage one water pump right next to it pop this one out slap the other one in before all the coolant drained out and you'd only lose about a half a gallon to a gallon with this one you're not able to because of the style of the fan um if you pull the shroud off and you pulled your fan blade off you could probably do the whole thing and lose way less than that because you had room to work but doing it right here on the road on the side of the road or right in the driveway super easy to do uh, so i mean it's not a not a difficult job none of the, none of this is going to be very difficult but uh yeah i mean she's a she's a workhorse but the other thing that i that i was able to do is uh the washer fluid, there's a little grommet down in here where the pickup tube goes in, where the little pump deal is. So that was that grommet was actually bad because the, uh, so as soon as you started it up, the washer fluid would, uh, the light would go off. And then there's an issue with the trailer brake uh, wiring. And what that is, is in this wiring harness right here, this plug, it's got a short in it somewhere. So I went underneath the bed, tested the wiring harness, and disconnected that plug. Disconnected that plug right there, and this plug right here, and was able to get the uh, sensor to go off. So, which tells me it's in the it's in the wiring harness somewhere. So I got to cut that apart, find that break. Now I did use the trailer lights on the. Uh, the side pin right here to uh, run the trailer lights for the trailer when I picked up the Bobcat. So they do work. Um, I don't have electric brakes on it. So I was just using lights. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it worked great. It towed great. I didn't even realize that the trailer was behind me. Got up to 70 mile an hour. You know, because the the gear rating in this truck is 444. Um, <laughs> it's a little low, especially when you're only running 30 inch tires or 31 inch tires. Um, that's kind of another reason why I wanted to switch out to the uh, the super singles. Still keep your your load rating or at least 90% of it, and uh, instead of having the little pizza cutters, you would have almost a meet that same size front and rear. Uh, not so worried about the back end going down.
because most of your weight isn't packed here. You got <laughs> about 5,000 of that 9,000 right here, sitting right over that front axle with those tiny narrow ass tires. So, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a literally just every, every single time you drive around off of a paved road, the probability of it dropping is pretty, pretty high. Now I've taken it through the yard, you know, dro drove all the way out to the, the back side of the yard, did my, did a lap around the yard just to see if it would sink. I had no real issue, but I've got some pretty stable ground out here. I mean, it's up on top of a hill. It drops off back behind that trailer and behind those that wood line. It'll drop off about 25 or 30 feet down to a creek bed. So up here, this is basically the top of a hill, super dry, you know, it's sand clay mixed top. Uh, you know, that if the ground gets saturated, yeah, it'll get soft, but no major issues. So anyways, I'm gonna stop that video. I'm gonna go get, uh, get a cup of coffee put my car hearts on because like I said it's 45 degrees it's not super cold but maybe it's just because I'm from Wisconsin I don't know but uh anyways I'll catch up with you guys in a minute and uh <clears throat> we'll see what we can do I'm gonna call the Ford dealership and try and see if I can get those intake manifold gaskets and uh, a little piece of tubing so I can put the rest of that 550 together and we'll go from there so all right bye